Hello everyone, my name is Devin Moreno and welcome to my investing journey channel. And today we're going to go ahead and discuss one of the most critical pieces before you can begin your real estate journey, which is finding a mentor. Guys, I would not even begin, I wouldn't even buy my first house without finding a mentor. So I'm going to guide you along the process. This was a critical thing I had to do when I first decided that I wanted to get into real estate. I had six months before I was going to buy my first house. Six months from that time, I needed to find a realtor who would help me and discover everything that I needed to know and guide me along the way. This is absolutely crucial. So let's get into it. How do we find one of these guys for free though? And that's the main important part because unfortunately a lot of them aren't gonna wanna help you unless you shell out a lot of money. So there's gotta be a trick to it. When you're starting off in this business, you don't have the money to spend on it, how can we do it? So first off, we need to understand why do we want a free mentor, all right? Um, or why do you want a mentor in general? Uh, why can't you just use life experiences as your mentor? Well, the problem with that is in real estate, you are dealing with the tens and even hundreds of thousands of dollars, which means when you make mistakes, it will cost you tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds it will cost you a ton. This is not like stocks where, I mean, as long as you're not shorting a stock, whatever you put into the stock is all you can lose. No, in this case, you can lose a lot more than that. You can fight through legal problems. You can have scammers and stuff like that, and they can take you for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It can get brutal. So small mistakes can mean big deals in this case, you're going to want someone who can absolutely help you along that, or at least just give you someone you can ask along the way on those questions you need. Uh, the next thing is you need access to their resources. We're talking about contractors, CPAs, bookkeepers, and such like that. You will want uh, to have access to their stuff because a lot of times if you just go on the market and just ask for random people They may notice that you don't know what you're doing I mean within the first five minutes of talking to you anyone who's a professional in their field can figure out when someone is Really clueless about what they're talking about this gives them the opportunity to rip you off or not really give you the best advice or sometimes maybe they genuinely want to be helpful but they actually don't know what they're doing because you didn't get someone who knew what they were doing and then they give you terrible advice that you end up following and it can throw you into a lot of pitfalls. This is where a mentor's real uh, resources can help you out. This mentor has already been in the business, he already has his team established and he's already vetted them through tried and proven methods. So you wanna use their resources when possible and just ask them for it and prove yourself along the way and they'll end up giving you those resources in time. So another thing is to review your work. Uh, you're often gonna wanna make sure, how could I have done that better and stuff like that. Sometimes it's a little hard to just look up. How, did, how could I have renovated my house better? <laughs> you can't. Uh, you need someone to walk through your house and look at all the details and tell you little things about it. A mentor can do this for you very well. And the last thing is keeping you accountable and inspired. Uh, this is the one big thing for me and why I think you need a mentor. Uh, they often, they're going to keep you moving in that direction. A lot of times in this business, it's going to be easy to give up. It's going to be easy to just want to stop. And those mentors can keep you moving uh, as long as you are inspired by them in the right way. A lot of times they're not going to force you. They're not going to say, you know, oh, nope, come on, keep going. But they just might ask, you know, how are you doing? Or they may show their own success. You might see their success and be like, you know what? Let's keep going. I want to be just like that. So that's why I think you need a mentor. And uh, so the thing is though, there's a lot of people who claim to know real estate. Uh, there's a lot of people who claim to know what they're doing in this business. So what qualifies someone as a mentor versus someone who's not? Am I a mentor? Should you consult me? Should you consult your parents or maybe someone who's rented a few places? I mean, what is a mentor exactly? So ultimately in my mind, we want someone who has a lot of experience in failure. Okay, a lot of experience in that because what, and, and they kept moving and then demonstrated success. This takes time. It takes a lot of time to fail multiple times until you generate enough success and then make a lot of money and then start to really know what you're doing. So ultimately, what I would say is a mentor is someone who owns multiple properties. 
owns multiple properties, not just has rented multiple properties in the past. Okay, so I often, for me, I make my number 10. It's an arbitrary number, 10 properties is what I want. Uh, if you own 10 or more, then I will say you know what you're doing. And it's at this point where 10 properties means that you're dealing with an overwhelming amount of tenants, an overwhelming amount of like different issues and balancing acts with taxes and stuff like that, and, and different laws and regulations regarding your purchasing of property that probably already started moving into more complicated purchases. Uh, that will help you know future moves. So it's not just simply buying and renting a house. Maybe they bought an 18 unit complex or maybe they bought from auctions and stuff like that. This can help you on your way and you want someone who already has that kind of established. Uh, he, also a person with multiple properties will have vetted multiple contractors, will have vetted multiple p different people in every single type of field. They'll know what they're doing. They've done this over and over again. So for me, that number is 10. And uh, you want a mentor who has the time and incentive to meet you. Uh, this can be a little bit of a problem because you can't just walk up to people and say, hey, you're successful. Can you teach me everything I need to know? That's not going to work. You're going to want to find someone who has a reason to want to talk to you and they may not even know you before you start talking to them. So I'll teach you in this video how to figure that out. The next thing out is someone who's looking for your best interests, all right? So this is also gonna be complicated. A lot of mentors out there really don't care if you succeed. They really don't care where you go. Uh, they're really just looking out for their uh, next paycheck and such. Uh, this will you'll find at conferences and these seminars and stuff like that where people are like, pay me $3,000 and I'll give you six hours of my time or something like that. There's not a whole lot of interest unless you've vetted that person uh, quite a bit. Um, most of the time, you're, you're not really gonna find people who care about you very much. And uh, preferably, you want a mentor who can become your friend. Uh, this is a great opportunity to where if you become friends with your mentor, they can become a resource not only over time, but someone who you can keep looking toward not only for that inspiration, but also that support when you need it. So this is a personal you want, person you want a personable relationship with. And I do stress that a lot. I found multiple people who own multiple properties, but I didn't partner up with them. I didn't ask them to be my mentor because I knew in the long run, me and that person have nothing in common. We would not typically be friends. So who are the wrong mentors? Let's go into the list of them. So first off, family and friends. This is nothing but bad advice and bad experience most of the time. Now, there's an exception to this. If your family and friends are real estate investors, that's totally different. If they have some knowledge in the field, then stick with that little bit of knowledge that they have in the field. You do not want to suddenly follow the advice of your family and friends who have rented a place before, or you know, like they had a house, they couldn't sell it, so they decided to rent it, and they built a realty company to rent it for them. Guys, these are accidental landlords. Uh, these are people who may have dabbled in the business. They're not going to have good, solid experience for you to work on, and most of the time, they might even discourage you from even investing in the first place. I know this happened to me. I honestly just stopped telling anybody that I was investing because I did didn't want to handle the negativity on the negative comments and the negative experience. Oh, what if the tenants, you know, abandon you or whatever happened to them? Uh, this can happen quite a bit. Uh, so just keep that in mind about family and friends. I mean, yes, they may have rented a property, but guys, that's like owning a stock and then saying you're a stockbroker. It doesn't make any sense. You're not a professional in the field. You just happen to trade a little bit. And in this case, you happen to rent a little bit. So there definitely is a lot more to real estate investing than just simply renting a house. Uh, the next thing is conferences. I would not use these as mentors. They are expensive. Expensive. There is no personal relationship with you, uh, so there's no real incentive to keep following up with you. And to be honest, you can probably learn everything they're gonna say on YouTube. You really don't need to attend these five to 50,000, and yes, 50,000, there are seminars that expensive. You don't need to attend those. You can find all the information online for free. You just have to dig a little bit harder and you'll save a lot more money doing that. So uh, the next thing is your social network. Now, this once again comes with a few exceptions. If you find people in your social network that are uh, investors uh, and they want to help you and they already know you and they like you a lot, then great, you have just found your mentor for free. However, I'm talking about your social network where you start to uh, go out into your scene and you start to talk to people and stuff like that. Now, networking is great, it's important, but what might end up happening is you find people who really don't have the time for you. Like, they'll hear, all right, you're interested in getting into it, but they're kind of like, ah, well, 
you know, what if I teach you all this stuff and you, you just stop out and you, you drop out of this whole thing, it's too hard and whatnot. A lot of times, just like, you know, they'll give you a little bit of advice here and there, but they're not gonna be your mentor. Someone who will handhold you and guide you through the process. Not handhold necessarily, but, you know, really be there by your side every step of the way. So that's the problem with the whole social network. It is great for finding people. It's great for meeting people and networking around, but you may not, most likely not, find a, an actual mentor this way, but just someone who's willing to help out with a few questions. So the next thing we have is wholesalers. Now, if you don't know what a wholesaler is, a wholesaler is someone who finds off the market properties. So properties that are not on the MLS, so you wouldn't go to your Keller Williams agency or anything like that for them, all right? They find off the market properties and what they do is they buy them from the, the owner, then they sell them to another buyer, another like flipper or an investor. Okay, so that's what a wholesaler is. They buy a house and sell it immediately. Now, uh, they don't do any work on it. And in fact, they even do this so quickly that they're not even out of the contract by the time they've sold it. They actually most of the time don't sell the house so much as sell the contract to the house. So they, they almost never even have ownership of it throughout the entire process. And that's most of the time what wholesalers do. Now, wholesalers uh, do offer a lot of courses and a lot of mentorship. Now, why is that? Well, the thing about wholesaling is it takes a lot of time. Uh, they have to find these leads. That's what they call them, leads, where they, they uh, find people who are selling houses and stuff like that. It takes a long Long time you need to drive around and you need to search these different resources and stuff like that like other than the MLS because like I said they're not on the market necessarily so it you generally have to kind of send out mailers and all this physical work well the wholesaler doesn't need to do that work they only need to find the buyer they only need to negotiate with the seller but they don't need to actually find the people they can have someone else do that so a lot of times these wholesalers will say hey I'll teach you everything you need to know just come work for me sometimes they'll even want you to pay for them do not pay for wholesale you're working for them don't pay for them but most of the time they're just gonna have you finding houses and then when you give them the lead they might give you a percentage and it's usually a low percentage so just be aware of that uh, it's a little better to do what's known as JV a joint venture which is you find it on your own and then pitch it to a wholesaler on your own uh, and then try to work out a commission deal for that it's a little better to do it that way than it is to just straight up work for them most of the time that will not go in your favor and definitely don't pay for it so uh, the next one is investors who help investors, young investors. Now, I've run into a couple of these. Uh, they're kind of interesting. So you'll find these generally a general contractor. It's a general contractor and they say, oh, I'm an investor who helps investors and I will help you renovate this house and such like that. Now, sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes. Uh, they're generally not going to give you a whole lot of their time. A lot of times what they're doing is just appealing to the new market of young investors and uh, they just want to make you feel safe and secure by working with them because of course there's a lot of mistrust about contractors. So some of them are pretty much, you know, they're fine. They're not someone who is really trying to rip you off, but they really don't care to actually help you. And the ones who might be overly willing to help you might get you to spend tons of money because you don't know what you're doing. Remember you have a big bullseye on your face. So Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so they can often be scams as well. So let's go into who is a great mentor. And this is the one that I found, a mentor for your beginning starting properties. And that is very specific types of realtors. Okay, so realtors are industry experts. They know the market, they know contractors, they know the areas you're trying to buy. Uh, you don't have to pay them if you're buying a house, then you don't have to pay them anything. The seller pays a commission on them, so now they have incentive to work for you, which is huge. You're paying a realtor and they don't have, to, and you, but you're not really paying for them. So realtors come across as people who have a lot of knowledge and have incentive to work with you, but the problem is how do you find the right one? What you don't want to do is find your local realtor, you walk into a realtor shop and just get the first person you find or your friend who happens to be a realtor. Guys, getting a real estate in license is not hard. In fact, you don't have to know anything really to get it. You don't have to know anything about investing to get it. So just because they have a real estate license to sell realty properties does not mean they know anything about investing in real estate. It just means they have a license to sell them. So just keep that in mind. You might find one of your friends is a realtor and you might ask them, they might know a little bit about the home buying process 
great, but they can't analyze the deals, they can't analyze the numbers effectively enough in order for you to make sure you know what you're doing in your investments. So what you wanna do is a combination of what I said a little earlier in the video. A realtor who owns, in my case, 10 properties. I said, I'm gonna find a realtor who owns no less than 10 properties. And that's the person I'm gonna work with. And I did that. I found a realtor who actually owned more than 40 properties. And I hired that person on as my realtor because I also, I was friends with this person. I had an interaction with him where I'm like, you know what, I could be friends with you. That creates a personal reaction where you don't feel quite as much like you're gonna get scammed because if that person also feels the same way about you, then they have less incentive to just wanna rip you off for a commission. Now, you still wanna make sure you do your due diligence. Don't just let necessarily listen to everything they say. So if they say, yeah, this $500,000 house is an investment. Well, no, it's also a massive commission in their favor. <laughs> so just make sure that you actually analyze your deals and make sure they show you how to analyze deals. See, what's gonna happen is they may want you to buy a certain property and whatnot, but then they're gonna have to show you why they think it's a good deal. So they'll show you their metrics, their pro formas. Uh, these are uh, just basically Excel spreadsheets that they use to analyze deals, maybe even sometimes an app uh, to analyze deals, and they can show you to build you confidence in how to analyze a deal so that way you'll buy the property. All right, so it might start off like that. Go ahead and go with it, all right? That's fine, just be smart on your own, but the best part is, is they can show you the market. You can also ask them, where are your houses located? Where are they buying? Stuff like that. Uh, and then you can also make sure you bounce their ideas off of other realtors. Now, don't necessarily, if ideas are contradicting, don't necessarily think that they're lying. That may not be true. Remember, different investors have different strategies and different realtors have different opinions, but it's just something that you can do to try out. So um, that's the one thing I look for is investor realtors, not regular realtors, investor realtors. Oftentimes these are not people you will find in an office. If you wanna find an investor realtor, they're not generally just gonna be sitting there. Most investors make in the millions, they don't have time to just be sitting in, a, in an office. You might ask, why are they realtors at all? This is a, uh, an interesting concept. Most investors are realtors, but most realtors are not investors. Uh, investors become realtors so that way they can double dip on commissions. So let's say I'm buying a house and I am a realtor. Well, I get to take the commission as well. So, because I am the buying agent. And so that's why a lot of them will become like that. So just note that about them. You're not gonna find them typically just sitting around. You will generally find them uh, kind of networking. Uh, find your local RIAs, these uh, basically a real estate investment association. Um, there's uh, the Baltimore RIA, which is the one I attend. Uh, you can find lots of people that way. You're definitely gonna wanna network with investors and then they'll point you out toward investor realtors. And this information is pretty public. Uh, most of where your investor really is. Look on Meetup, Facebook, stuff like that. You're going to find a lot of these. So uh, that is pretty much it, guys. That is how I found my first mentor in real estate and got him to work for me for free. I didn't pay him anything. And now I still have a relationship with him multiple houses later. And I found a lot of great deals working with him. So uh, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And let me know your thoughts on what you did to find your first free mentor. Thanks for watching.